Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there. I'm getting rid of this old arcade. It is a piece of junk. What's wrong with it? It's old. Kids, nobody wants to spend their money on an old, 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 old machine. Around here, if you don't pull your weight, boom, into the trash you go. <laughs> ah. Oh, coming back later for you, pal. You can stay with me as long as you like. That's just great. Yep. I'll see you then. <laughs> well, this is really something. An old friend is coming to visit, and he'll be arriving today. What's his name, Grandpa? Nathaniel Cass, but we call him Nat. He's a very special fellow. I have to go pick up something at the store. It's a present I want to give him. Do you know Grandpa's friend, Nat? Oh, I'm afraid not. I wonder if he's old like Harry. What? Harry old? Oh, boy. I guess it's a matter of what you think old is. I think 12 is old. <laughs> well, then what does that make me? 60? 60? 70? Tanya! Well, then how old are you? Well, let me tell you. Like uh, my old granny used to say, you're as old as your tongue and a little older than your teeth. Huh? Oh, what I'm trying to say is you're only as old as you feel. And I feel a pretty bouncy these days. <laughs> what does that mean? You're only as old as you feel? Oh, it means you can be old on the outside, but still feel young in the inside. You know, when people get older, they change on the outside. They get wrinkles, gray hair. Some people lose all their hair. Right, and that makes them look older on the outside. But what really matters is how you feel on the inside. That's what's really important. Hello, Shining Time Station. Stacy Jones speaking. Uh-huh. Oh, of course you can put your package on the train to Turley. Uh, just a moment, please. Kids, I have to take this call. Will you please keep an eye out for Harry's friend? Sure. Bye. Bye, Stacy. Gee, this stuff must have been here forever. Look at this thing. Some kind of picture machine. What do you see? A couple of old people. Whoa! What's going on? Conductor, I should have known. Hello, Matt. Hope you like the show. What have you there, Tanya? Just some old junk. Junk, as in rubbish? I think not. Some of those old things are beautiful. They have style, charm, personality, history. They do? Of course they do. Old things can be very special indeed. Take my friend Toby the tram engine. Now, Toby is as old as the hills, and I'm afraid the railroad thinks he's of no use anymore. Well, here, let me tell you.
Toby is a tram engine. He has cow catchers and side plates and doesn't look like a steam engine at all. He takes freight cars from farms and villages to the main line and is cheerful to everyone he meets. He has a coach called Henrietta, who has seen better days. It's not fair at all, she grumbles, remembering she used to be full and nine cars would rattle behind her. Now there are only three or four, for the farms and factories send their goods mostly by truck. Toby is always careful. The cars, buses and trucks often have accidents. Toby hasn't had an accident for years. The buses are crowded and Henrietta is empty. A lady and a stout gentleman stood on Toby's platform. He was, of course, a Topham hat, but Toby didn't know this yet. Come on, Grandfather, cried the children. Do look at this engine. That's a tram engine, Stephen, said Sir Topham Hatt. Is it electric? asked Bridget. Hoosh, hissed Toby. Shh, shh, said her brother. You've offended him. But trams are electric, aren't they? They are mostly, but this is a steam tram. May we go in it, Grandfather? Please. Stop, said Sir Topham Hatt to the conductor. They all scrambled into Henrietta. Hip, hip, hooray, chanted Henrietta. But Toby did not sing. Electric indeed, electric indeed, he snorted. He was proud of being a steam train. What is your name, asked Sir Topham Hatt. Toby, sir. Thank you, Toby, for a very nice ride. Thank you, sir, said Toby. He felt better now. This gentleman, he thought, is a gentleman who knows how to speak to engines. The children came every day for two weeks. Sometimes they rode with the conductor, sometimes in empty cars. On the last day of all, the driver invited them into his cab. All were sorry when they had to go away. And Sir Topham Hatt and his family thanked everyone. Come again soon, replied Toby. We will, we will call the children. And they waved till Toby was out of sight. The months passed. Toby had few cars and fewer passengers. Our last day, Toby, said his driver one morning. The manager says we must close tomorrow. That day, everyone wanted the chance of a last ride. The passengers joked and sang, but Toby and his driver wished they wouldn't. Goodbye, Toby, said the passengers afterwards. We are sorry your line is closing down. So am I, said Toby. Nobody wants me, Toby thought, and went on happily to sleep. Next morning, the shed was flung open, and old Toby woke with a start to see his driver waving a piece of paper at him. Wake up, Toby, they shouted excitedly. The mail has just arrived, and there is a letter for us from the stout gentleman. Maybe it's good news. What was in the letter? I don't know yet, but for Toby and Henrietta's sake, I hope it's good news. I'm off to find out. I hope it's good news. I like Toby and Henrietta. Me too. Here's the train. Let's go look for Grandpa's friend now. Wait for me. Nobody got off. I hope Nat's still coming to visit. Well, there's another train coming today. I bet I'll be on that one. What if we forgot to get on the train? 
Well, then maybe he took a bicycle instead of the train. A bicycle? Sure. Just because a person is older doesn't mean he stops doing things. Being old is just a part of a person. You know the expression, older but wiser? Well, it's true. That's why my grandpa knows the answers to so many things. That's right. Older people store up all the experiences of a lifetime. You know, we can learn a lot from older people. In fact, take a peek in here, and you'll see what I mean. When I was young, I used to play by the firehouse. After school each day, I had an old friend. That was way back when He had a wrinkled face and twinkling eyes And he used to take me fishing by the riverside Every day Come what may He was oh so old but ah so wise He'd say you're only as old as you feel inside I learned many things from that old man Besides how to catch fish by the river bend How to keep a smile for a good long while Yes, life's like a fish and then it throws out its line Gets a pretty good catch, not all the time I don't mind and He was strong and kind He was old so old but I so wise He'd say you're only as old as you feel inside Now I'm getting old as you can see But I'm happy with my grandkids on my knee When they say, hey, tell me about the good old days I think of my friends and say life's like a train Keeps a running down the track through the sun and the rain and the magic road when you come to know when you're oh so old but I'm so wise you'll see you're only as old as you feel inside he was oh so old but I'm so wise yeah you're only as old as you feel inside Grandpa. He'll be along. I got his present. What is it? It's a surprise. But I guarantee you will like it as much as he will. Yep. We had some good times together. Great memories. Like what? Well, you see, Nat liked to ride up on the engine with me. And we had a favorite. It was a beautiful engine. And she had a name. The Rainbow Tiger. But we called her Tiger just for short. The Indian Valley Railroad retired the Rainbow Tiger and donated her to the Railroad Museum. Sort of like putting the iron horse out to pasture. Now, every weekend, folks come down to the museum to look at her and to work on her. Ned and I had some fine times on the Rainbow Tiger. Well, it just goes to show that even if a thing is mighty old, there can still be plenty of life left in it. Mm. Listen, you kids. I got work to do. Why don't you run along now? Okay. See you later, Grandpa. Bye-bye. It's a toy. Old people don't play with toys. Maybe if they feel young, they do. Look, there's Mr. Conductor. Grandpa was waiting for his friend, Nat. He was telling us about some of his memories. Memories, memories, dreams of love so true. Over the sea of memories, 
I'm drifting back to you. Oh, yes, memories are wonderful. They let you experience a good time over and over again. My word, if you think about it, everything has some kind of memory attached to it. Do you think these clothes have memories? Maybe they remember all the places the people wore them to. Hello? Uh-oh, there's that fellow again. Goodbye, Matt. Goodbye, Tanya. Ah, uh, kids, uh, when you finish with these old clothes, don't leave them lying around, OK? Either clean them up or uh, throw them away. Schemer! Hey, that's my name. Don't wear it out. <laughs> What's wrong with the old arcade game? Just because it's old doesn't mean you have to throw it out. Hey, you want to know why? Because it's trash. That's why. Kids, let me give you some advice. If you want to get ahead in this world, you have to be willing to change with the times. Now, I want you to look at this and pay attention to your old pal, Schemer. <gasps> Beautiful, isn't it? This is my poster for the machine of the future. You see, a smart businessman, like myself, for instance, always invests in the future, not the past. So remember, kids, it is out with the old, in with the new. <laughs> OK. Oh, and kids, uh, do me a favor, OK? When you, when you finish, uh, don't forget to clean up, because a uh, sloppy place means uh, sloppy business. Later. Hey! Hi, Mr. Conductor. My word, all things hopping on the island of Soda. I can tell you now what's happened to old Toby and Henrietta. It wasn't fair that they couldn't ride the tracks anymore. I hope they didn't keep them in the shed. Let me start with my good friend Thomas. <whistles> There's a line to a quarry at the end of Thomas's branch. It goes for some distance along the road. Thomas was always very careful to whistle here in case anyone was coming. Early one morning, a large policeman was sitting close to the line. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the officer who had just retired. Peep, peep, he whistled. Good morning. Thomas expected that the new officer would be friendly too, but was sorry to see that he didn't look friendly at all. He was red in the face and very cross. Disgracefully spluttered. I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was so quiet, and now engines come whistling suddenly behind me. I'm sorry, sir, said Thomas. I only said good morning. A policeman pointed to Thomas. Where's your cow catcher, he asked. But I don't catch cows, sir. Don't be funny, snapped the policeman. He looked at Thomas's wheels. No side plates either. And he wrote in his notebook. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and a cow catcher in front to protect people and animals from being dragged under the wheels if they stray onto the line. You haven't, so you are dangerous. Rubbish, said Thomas's driver. We've been along here hundreds of times and never had an accident. That makes it worse, the policeman answered. He wrote regular lawbreaker in his book. Thomas puffed sadly away. Sir Topham Hatt was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, you are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said Sir Topham Hatt. <laughs> I'm sorry, my dear, he said to his wife. Thomas is in trouble with the police, and I must go at once. At the station, Thomas's driver told Sir Topham Hatt what had happened. Dangerous to the public, indeed. We'll see about that. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to the policeman. But however much he argued with him, it was no good. The law is the law, he said, and we can't change it. Sir Topham Hatt felt exhausted. I'm sorry, driver, he said. It's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh, sir, said Thomas. They'll say I look like a tram. Sir Topham Hatt stirred. Then he laughed. 
Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We want a tram engine. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He takes freight cars from the farms, but the trucks are taking over most of his work and he needs a change. He has cow catchers and side plates. I'll write to his superintendent at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. That's a good engine, said Sir Topham Hatt. I see you've brought your coach, Henrietta. You don't mind, do you, sir? asked Toby. The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. We couldn't allow that. Toby made the silly cars behave even better than Thomas did. First, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and frightened the policeman, they've been firm friends ever since. So Toby and Henrietta have a new lease on life. They're chugging down the rails as happily as ever. Hey, kids, I've got great news. The next train is coming soon. How about a little music to speed her along? I've got a nickel in here somewhere. Oh, here come our marching order. OK, everyone get ready and uh, no hot dogging. You dig? Pushy, pushy, pushy. <laughs> my old friend, Matt. <laughs> oh, how great, are you? Great to see you. Good, again. good. Come good. on in. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, <laughs> just a little something. <laughs> just it's a little so something. Great to see you, I tell you. That's all, yeah. What do you got here? Well, I don't know. Oh, Harry. A magic block of clay. <laughs> it's just a piece of clay. No, it's not just a piece of clay, it's a magic block of clay. Do you know that there's almost anything you would want in that block of clay? Like, you like a pony? Yeah!
Is this one broken? Oh, no. That's a piece of junk. It uh, outlived its time. You see, around here, we are entering the space age. Take a look. Oh, that thing. I can play that anywhere. I come here for the old machines. They're the fun ones. You're not going to throw this one out, are you? Oh, well, uh, that, that was part of the plan. Uh, that would be a shame. Look at the lines on this beauty. They don't make arcade machines like this anymore. Well, I guess I'll have to go elsewhere. Good day to you. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Do you want to play this machine? That's why I came here. For you, I'll put it in service. Uh, would anyone like to play with me? I do. Me too. Good, let's get started. Great. <laughs> okay. Ah, pardon me. Excuse me. Uh, do you think you need a fourth? Oh, I... <laughs> what do you think? Why not? Sure. Come on, join us. Oh, great, great, great. Out of the way, out of the way. Me no. first, me first. Hey! <laughs> train to Turley stop here? Yes, three times a day. Uh, uh, what did you say? <laughs> yes, it is loud in here. <laughs> Shining Time Station may be old, but it still has plenty of life in it. Oh, what else can I do for you? Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So much to see. So far to travel, so much to learn to know. Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to. Who knows how far you'll go? To a shining time station. 